Good morning students. Um, yesterday uh, we had seen uh, or rather in the previous video we had been covering about Mahajan Pads and then in the, uh, the, the prominent Mahajan Pads and then we studied in a bit of detail about Magad and its prominent kings and then of course also the contemporary uh, southern rulers who were equally illustrious and equally uh, considered to be the great rulers and uh, then the, the concept of divine kings that is uh, what we see right now the pandyan chiefs uh, senaguttan visits the forest this is an excerpt from the silapadikaram an epic written in tamil uh, students i i should have uh, to, uh, you know uh, definitely there isn't much mentioned here about it all this paragraphs or rather this box gives you an idea about is definitely that they were aware of just as the defeat did show respect to the victorious king so did they bring gifts ivory fragrant wood fragrant wood would be in uh, because we are talking about south india so the fragrant wood would be in all probability the sandalwood uh, fans made of the hair of deer honey sandalwood uh, uh, yes red osher antimony turmeric cardamom pepper etc they brought coconuts um, students but if you ever get coming um, you know i would like to tell you that if you ever get a chance to read this book uh, uh, uh don't mention uh, don't uh, forget this uh, book you know um, i remember it was written by Prin, it's written by elango if I remember correctly, the author, uh, but it is considered to be, and it is a Tamil classic. It is, uh, though it is essentially a love story uh, uh, from the Tamil kingdom, but considered to be an all-time great Indian classic, like you have uh, um, uh, Meghdu by Kalidas, and he is, uh, uh, you know, this book is considered to be one of the real, real classics of South India. So if you ever get a chance, definitely, a lot of English translations are also available, and uh, probably Hindi ones as well, uh, but do read it. It is, uh, um, uh, you know, it is a love story between uh, a married couple, actually, um, between Kanaki and her husband Kovalan. Kanaki, if you go to South India, if you if you have travelled South India, students, you would uh, you would especially in Tamil Nadu, you would find the name Kanaki as a very popular name of uh, girls uh, in Tamil society, and because uh, Kanaki was uh, is the heroine of this very novel. Okay, she had, the story goes something like she had cursed uh, the people of Madurai and Madurai had been burnt uh, to ashes and then the gods um, requested Kanaki not to be so angry and then they made the temple in in her memory in Madurai and that's how Madhu, Madurai, the town of Madurai was uh, revived. So that's um, a bit of detail. I thought I should mention it because if you ever get a chance to read, don't uh, miss this book. I read this when I was in college again. Uh, okay, and those were the times. Yes, uh, yes. Now today we uh, start with uh, uh, in praise of Samadra Gupta. Please read this box yourself. Okay. Um, Changing countryside, popular perceptions of kings. What did subjects think about their rulers? Obviously, the inscriptions do not provide all the answers. In fact, ordinary people rarely left accounts of thoughts and experiences. Yes, that is also very curious. That uh, uh, you know, it is usually the uh, the court uh, the the court man, the administrator, the people who used to document everything for the kings. Uh, basically, in short, the official records are the only source, um, or rather, the major source of information about the kings. So the normal people the ordinary citizens they and and it's not just only in india anywhere in any uh, old and ancient civilization people somehow were uh, not very forthcoming in expressing their um, honest opinion and views about the uh, the rulers or the administration um, that used to rule them you know they used to just be happy minding their own business and not documenting anything uh, because whatever they would have documented would have been considered by, uh, by 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 us today as far more impartial and far more honest 
and without prejudice then uh, what the uh, you know the people within the court would record because they would always be singing praises about the uh, ruler and the king and the queens and that's it okay so um, so nevertheless uh, historians have tried to solve this problem by examining stories contained in anthologies such as the jataks and panchatantra this is something which all of us have uh, we we have comics and the jatak comics and the panchatantra comics and i think many of us have uh, gone through these and read these comics when we were young I, okay. Many of these stories probably originated as pro, uh, as popular oral tales that were later committed to writing. The Jataks were written in Pali around the middle of the first millennium uh, after Christ. Now, students are again coming to this. Uh, we have already seen uh, two major languages about uh, 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 Kurosthi and the other one was again uh, Brahmi. Now this is again Pali. Now Pali also is students interestingly uh, it is not a, a language which uh, originated in say the eastern part of India that would be say the Magad uh, which then was the largest uh, Mahajanpad but Pali also has its origins in uh, it's 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 also considered to be an Indo-European uh, and uh, Indo-Aryan language. So naturally, uh, in today's, if you look at the geographical boundary of India, it is definitely outside today's geographical boundary. It would be in the areas around, uh, again, uh, you know, areas around the, the southern Afghanistan, northern Pakistan of today, and a bit of Iran. So uh, even this language originated from there. This is the, that is, those areas are the birthplace of Pali language as well, just like uh, Kharosthi and Brahmi. Okay. Um, as the story uh, indicates, the relationship between kings and his subjects, especially the rural population, could often be strained. Kings frequently tried to fill their coffers by demanding high taxes, and peasants particularly found such demands oppressive. Escaping into the forest remained an option, as reflected in the Jatak story. Students, but one thing you have to understand, one very important fact that you need to understand is that it is it is not always that the king was delighted uh, in raising the taxes, the agricultural taxes. But you have to understand that a, a king has to uh, run the affairs of the state, he has to run the administration, and 80% or 85 or even 90% of the economy depended on agriculture. Now, agriculture then, even today, even after... 10,000, 50,000 or 30,000 years or 20,000 depending on, uh, you know, whichever part of the world, different, which different civilization we are talking about, agriculture even today primarily depends on the mercy of nature. Right, right from the monsoon to the sunlight to uh, and the crops, then the fertility of the land, how fertile the soil is. This that also depends how lucky you are because the different soils would have different fertility in different areas. So it even today is nature dependent. So for king, for the king, he had to run the affairs of the state, and agriculture still remained the most important contributor of uh, uh, money. To his coffers so naturally he had to uh, uh, you know keep raising the taxes most of the times and people then and of course they would be uh, those decisions would never be popular decisions okay um, strategies for increasing production one such strategy is a shift uh, to plow agriculture which served uh, which spread in fertile alluvial uh, river uh, valleys such as those of Ganga and Kaveri. Now, Ganga happens to be the most important river system in north and Kaveri happens to be the most important system, river system in south. In fact, it is so important that even today, the states of the, the Tamil Nadu and Karnataka keep fighting over uh, the, the river waters of Kaveri. Okay, who should get what and who should get more and naturally both of them always keep claiming that they should get more. The iron-tipped uh, plowshare was used to turn the alluvial soil in areas which had high rainfall. Uh, moreover, in some parts of the Ganga Valley, production of paddy was dramatically increased by the introduction of transplantation, although this meant backbreaking work for the producer. Students, this, uh, this paragraph is like more like uh, 
uh, more like a geography uh, paragraph more than a history paragraph now what is transplantation um, i i'm sure a lot of you know about what transplantation is and uh, i would have loved to show uh, show you on the board but transplantation is essentially about you you, you know you first you grow the uh, the plant in some other place as a sapling okay and once it starts uh, uh, growing and just uh, probably it is just about two months old or maybe one and a half months old then you <clears throat> take it from there and then again plant it in the field okay first you plant it in the nursery okay and then you take it from there and plant it in the field so it is done twice instead of the other crops where you just uh, plow it once and then harvest it six months or five months uh, after after that so transplantation and we all know the most important and the most popular um, crop that is uh, transplanted all the time is the paddy that is rice okay of course there are certain other uh, vegetables as well that are transplanted but paddy or rice happens to be the most important one okay now while the plow uh, iron plowshare led to the growth in agriculture productivity its use was restricted to certain parts of the subcontinent cultivators in areas which were semi-arid such as parts of uh, punjab and rajasthan did not adopt it till the 12th century okay and those living in hilly tracts of the northeastern uh, they adopted much later okay because uh, you have to understand that uh, 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 the, the plowing is a very specialized activity today you think it is just uh, just as a matter of fact thing but it is uh, it is uh, not okay and uh, that is why um, eastern and central parts of the subcontinent practiced hoe agriculture i'm sure you must have studied about this in geography where hoe agriculture what exactly hoe hoe is essentially a tool which which you uh, which has a long stick and then it, it has a blade at the end and then you used to furrow it on the ground and are big uh, you know you you essentially make a line kind of a furrow and then you plant the sapling or the seed there and another strategy to, that is uh, to increase agriculture production was the use of irrigation the wells and canals and less commonly canals um, because uh, water this was most about water and uh, naturally uh, uh, all the areas would not be having those canals okay but you could you could surely have wells and tanks and that is why it is written less commonly canals because uh, you know you needed to have river systems close to the place uh, differences in rural society and uh, this is something uh, differences in rural society this is again about this would be about uh, about different class of people that ag uh, that existed even in uh, an economy where agriculture happened to be the driving force it is not just uh, this is talking about us uh, uh, this is talking essentially about a society which though 90 percent of it was about agriculture but even then there was a, a class system unlike today where you feel that yes um, the industrialists would be having all the money the labor would be having less money and the engineers would be somewhere stuck in between no so what this paragraph tries to tell you if you go through it it tries to tell you that uh, uh, the class uh, differentiation or the class segmentation was there even in, uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago when the even when 90 percent of the population was about agriculture and 90 uh, percent of the op uh, population indulged in agriculture and that is uh, very clear from uh, the uh, the sentence people living in the villages large land owners or well are plowmen or is havar and slaves or the adimai so this category is uh, there and was there even then thank you